Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and in this video, I'll be talking about the launch of Intel's long awaited Comet Lake line of desktop CPUs happening today, May 20th, 2020. Now, Comet Lake is a little bit late by most people's perspectives. Intel wouldn't really admit that, but the last desktop lineup we saw came at the end of 2018. That was the Coffee Lake Refresh, and it's been about 18 months. And in previous generations, Intel tried to stick to a 12 month cadence. So we're about six months late at this point. And even then, Comet Lake isn't actually a brand new CPU in any way. It's really more of a rebranding with an ultimate CPU kind of layered on top that's a little bit better than what we've seen before. And I'll be going over the whole lineup in a moment. But first, I should tell you what we'll actually be seeing today at launch in stores is only the high end Z490 chipsets and then the K-series unlocked processors. So that's the Core i9 10,900K, then the Core i7 10,700K, and then the Core i5 10,600K, the K standing for the unlocked processor aspect of that lineup. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that Intel has been struggling for many years to develop a new manufacturing process, a smaller manufacturing node. It's actually not achieved that, so it's still on 14 nanometer, that's the same process that it developed back in 2014 with the Broadwell line of CPUs. Now, we are also still on the same architecture. That was released in 2015 with this CPU, the Core i7-6700K, codenamed Skylake. So I may refer to the Skylake architecture a few times in this video. That's because today's Comet Lake actually uses the very same architecture. It just has a lot more cores than the 6700K did. Now, looking forward a little bit, we know that Rocket Lake is already coming, and Rocket Lake will also be on 14 nanometer, but it will be the first new architecture since Skylake in 2015. My estimate is that if Intel can get back on track, we might see that in December of 2020, but more likely early 2021 for Rocket Lake. And the important thing to keep in mind, if you're buying today or in the near future, Z490 chipsets do support Rocket Lake. In fact, we're talking about a brand new socket here, socket 1200. Previous CPUs used socket 1151 version 2, and then before that, socket 1151 version 1. And frankly, one of the things that Comet Lake really requires that perhaps previous sockets couldn't provide is more power. That is ultimately the story here. Comet Lake is a refresh where Everything that we've seen before has trickled down one notch and then layered on top is a 10 core, 20 thread CPU that uses an enormous amount of power. And that has meant that manufacturers have had to invest a lot of money in upgrading the power circuitry on their motherboards from top to bottom because the last thing they want you to do is buy a cheap motherboard from them, install a 10,900K and have the whole thing go up in smoke. So let's actually get into the lineup of CPUs first, starting with the Core i9-10900K. So being the only truly new CPU in the lineup and the most powerful mainstream desktop CPU Intel has ever released, the Core i9-10900K is definitely the star of the show. Looking over Intel's official spec sheet for the 10900K can make you a little bit bleary-eyed. There are actually five different frequencies listed here, starting at the 3.7 gigahertz maximum base frequency, going all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz, for the thermal velocity boost that's on a favored core when you have a single core load translation you'll almost never see that really the most important spec here is the 4.9 gigahertz all core turbo and i will be highlighting that for each of the cpus launching today so you can get a better sense of how they compare now of course this is a hyper threaded cpu it's 10 cores with 10 additional virtual cores for a total of 20 threads it has 20 megabytes of smart cache and it has official memory support for up to DDR4 2933. Now you may be asking yourself, well, haven't we seen that before already? Haven't we already hit 2933? Well, yes, of course you can use much faster RAM on a lot of previous generations of Intel CPUs. In fact, it's really common now to see 4,000 and above. But this official spec of 2933 is still important because that's the fastest RAM you'll see on OEM pre-built systems from the likes of HP, Acer, 
Asus, and even Corsair. So that's great if you are buying a pre-built, you'll get a little bit faster RAM support. Now in terms of the integrated graphics, it's the same thing we've been seeing for many years. It used to be called 530, now it's called 630. It really doesn't matter. It's not particularly fast, but it's good enough to get basic desktop work done. And I do think it's important that you can get a great CPU with built-in graphics for a lot of users out there who don't need graphics acceleration. Now here are the specs of the other series coming down the line. We'll see Core i7 and Core i5 at launch. Core i3 will take a little bit longer to show up. Now, of course, these are all hyper-threaded and that's another big story here. Last generation, we didn't see hyper-threading in anything but the Core i9. And it was really an anomalous generation. We had a Core i7 without hyper-threading, which had never happened before. And this was all a result of Intel being freaked out by some hacks that had surfaced that took advantage of hyper-threading and really got into the CPU. Well, since then, Intel has hardened its CPUs and hardened its hyper-threading technology, so it's not quite as fearful. Of course, it's not going to talk about that during the launch of Comet Lake, but that is why we're seeing hyper-threading coming back with a vengeance, and I do think it's a great thing. Now, as promised, I've put together a table of all the most popular 9th and 10th generation CPUs with their all-core turbo ratings. This is something Intel doesn't really want you to see, so I've had to dig it up from the specs. This allows you to compare these a little bit more easily, but you're still dealing with different core and thread arrangements. So let me break it down for you. A multi-threaded virtual core operates like 50% of a physical core. That means a 6-core 12-thread CPU is equivalent to about a 9-core CPU, and a 4-core 8-thread CPU is really equivalent to a 6-core CPU. In fact, we can just draw some arrows here to indicate exactly which each of these CPUs is equivalent to. The 10700K is last gen's 9900K. There is no doubt about it. It's the same CPU, just on a different socket. The Core i5 10600K isn't identical to the 9700K. It's actually the previous gen 8700K, rebranded as the 10600K. And then the Core i3-10100 is going to offer identical performance to the 9600K. And in fact, that CPU is the Core i7-6700K launched in 2015. One other thing I should say about the prices I've listed here, these are going to be the retail prices you'll see. Intel actually lists tray prices on its website and in its marketing. They are going to be a little bit lower. So what's obvious from this is that Intel hasn't actually really changed prices. It's just rebranded CPUs to give you a little bit more value at each existing price point. All right, now that we've discussed the CPUs that we can expect to see in the next few months, let's talk about Z490 motherboards for a moment. Now, of course, these will all have the new socket 1200 on them that is physically incompatible with previous sockets and previous CPUs. That means you do need a new motherboard to run the new CPUs, regardless of which CPU you choose from top to bottom, from Pentium up to the Core i9. You need a new motherboard. And right now, all we have is Z490 and they are going to be expensive. Now, the chipset itself doesn't add a lot of additional new functionality. There's no, for instance, PCIe 4.0. We do see a number of the higher-end motherboards coming with 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet, as well as 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 networking. So those are nice bonuses. But again, you didn't really need a new chipset to integrate those. Frankly, Z490 itself as a chipset is not particularly exciting. I think the story here is the upgraded power circuitry on these motherboards and the larger socket that is required to put that power to the CPU. So given that, let's take a look at a few of the very popular lines of motherboards over the past couple of years and the latest iteration of those in the Z490 form. So what I've done here is highlight some of the most popular motherboard families in the Intel world, starting with the Asus Maximus Hero going up $110 for the Z490 version. Similarly, the ROG Z490e Gaming is going up $50. MSI's immensely popular Tomahawk line is going up $30 to $190. And Gigabyte's ITX board is jumping up a whopping $100 to $270. And by the way, it is similar news for MSI and Asus in the ITX world. If you are building small form factor, you are in for sticker shock with Z490. Part of the reason, as I mentioned, is the more advanced Wi-Fi chipset, that's Wi-Fi 6, that you'll see on the Hero, the gaming, 
and the Aorus Ultra. The reason the Tomahawk probably isn't jumping up as much in price is frankly because it doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi 6 is adding additional cost to the other three boards. We're also seeing two additional USB ports on a few of these boards as well as an additional M.2 slot. So some of them now have three slots, which is quite impressive. The rest of the price increase definitely comes down to the enhanced power circuitry required to run that top-of-the-line 10,900K CPU. All right, that just about wraps it up, but I wanna leave you with one parting thought. I know I haven't been that positive about this rollout, and frankly, it's not that exciting to me, but I do want to mention that the fact that Skylake's architecture, released in 2015, is still being used today in this latest Comet Lake lineup is a testament to the prowess of Intel's engineers back then. This was a crowning achievement of the decade, and it was just last year in 2019 that AMD Zen 2 was able to catch up to Skylake in terms of instructions per clock cycle or IPC. So look, sometimes Intel really does change the game. I don't think Comet Lake is the lineup to do that, but Rocket Lake may be. It's gonna be a brand new architecture, the first new architecture since 2015, and it will drop right into Z490 motherboards. So that's what I'm most excited about. And my advice to most people looking at Comet Lake would be to say, you know what? Have an eye towards the future. Perhaps spend a little less on the CPU. Maybe don't go for the four or $500 model. Go for a Z490 motherboard and perhaps one of the mid-tier CPUs with an eye towards upgrading when Rocket Lake arrives because I think Rocket Lake could be a huge home run for Intel. It already knows what Zen 2 offers. It can probably predict what Zen 3, which will launch around the same time, will offer. I think Rocket Lake will probably beat both of those architectures. And that's because Intel has been working on this a really long time. AMD's abilities in terms of CPU design are no longer a secret. And Intel probably put a lot of money into finding a way to beat its arch nemesis at its game. And that's why I'm excited about Rocket Lake. Again, probably coming in early 2021. So if you have any questions about this video, please post them down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. As always, I appreciate a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you next time.